So we'll do our first multiplication that's not square matrices. So our first matrix will be 0, 1, 2, negative 1, negative 3, 0. And the second, 3, 0, minus 2, 4. And now I'm going to write the dimensions in purple below. So our first matrix has three rows and two columns. And the second matrix has two rows, two columns. So we matched our inner dimensions. What will the dimension of our product matrix be? Three by two. Three by two. So it's just whatever's left over. So we're going to get a three by two matrix. And what I strongly recommend is draw the across and the down arrow like this. So I'm going to cross first matrix down the second one. And I'm actually going to use a highlighter. I'll go for a light green here. I'm going to just split up the rows and then the columns of my second matrix. You don't have to do this, but it could help out. So our upper left entry, and remember it's three by two, so I'll go ahead and split this into three rows, two columns. So this is the shape of our matrix or the dimensions of our product matrix here. So the upper left, we're gonna have a zero times three is zero, plus one times negative two, which is negative two. And now I'll go to the second column first row. So I'm going to the second column, which is the 0, 4 column. So we've got 0 times 0 is 0, plus 1 times 4, which is 4. And then I want you to get the second row, both columns, and the third row, both columns. So get those two numbers, or those four numbers right now. And I'll come around and answer any questions that you have. You can use your finger or an extra pencil or pen to cover up extra rows and columns if you want. That works just as well. Any questions on these numbers here in this matrix? So I, we will multiply more matrices together, but this is the only uh, example that's just multiplication. We'll, like I said, it will multiply other matrices, but uh, the pattern works for any size as long as your inside dimensions match. Then you can multiply them. So let's talk about powers now. So if you see a squared, what does that mean algebraically? A times a. A times a, or just a a. So that means multiply a by itself. Now if we have a matrix, let's think about a matrix squared. If we're going to square a matrix, let's think about the dimensions. So if we have an m by n matrix, and we're going to multiply or square the matrix, what can you say about the dimensions for this product It makes sense? They have to be squares. So they need to be square matrices in order to raise it to a integer power. 
So we need our inside dimensions. I need m to equal n, which is known as a square matrix. So it means only square matrices can be raised two powers, or two integer powers. So we're only going to worry about integer powers. What in the heck is the square root of a matrix? We're not going to worry about that. Uh, technically, it would be the matrix such that when you square it, you would get that matrix. But that is way trickier than squaring a matrix. Uh, so we're not going to worry about roots, just positive powers. So let's take, we'll just do an easy matrix and square it. take the matrix 3, 1, negative 2, 4, and square it. I'm intentionally choosing small matrices because doing bigger ones just really takes more time and you don't really learn that much more from bigger matrices. So I want you to square this right now. You're just multiplying by itself. Any questions on this squaring? And of course, if I wanted a cube, you would just multiply A another time, fourth power another time, etc. So we're going to look at transposes next. So transpose are where rows become columns, columns become rows. Right, let's write this way faster. I'll just write rows with a double arrow to columns. So rows and columns switch. So we look at an example of transposing. If our matrix A was 3, 2, 0, 1, 4, 6, the dimensions will be two rows, three columns. And we transpose this matrix. Our transpose notation will be A, and we're going to use a T in the exponent. And it's a little bit strange. We're using a t in the exponent. So now we're going to find a transpose. Rows becomes columns. Columns become rows. So we had two rows in the original which means we'll get, we'll get two columns in the transpose. And we had three columns in the original, so when we transpose it, we'll get three rows. So again, your rows and columns are going to trade. One of the easiest ways to see this happen is think about your diagonal. So we're going to start in the upper left. And the diagonal, in this case, just goes through 3 and 4. And what you're going to do is reflect across your diagonal. So this is a lot like inverting a graph where you're going to reflect across a diagonal. When we reflect a graph, we reflected the y equal, across y equals x, so we reflect it that way to swap the x and the y-axis. We're reflecting a slightly different way here, but this way the rows will become columns. 
and we'll get a tall matrix that has two columns. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do is go one, row, one column at a time and flip it into a row. So that first column becomes the first row. So 3, 1 flips over to 3, 1. Now 2, 4. We're in row 2. And row 2 is now 2, 4. And last up, last column becomes the last row, 0, 6. So all we're doing is reflecting. So for any matrix, we'll take this matrix A, and we'll make this a M by N matrix. A, A transpose is always defined meaning no matter what the dimensions are, you can always multiply A, A transpose. And A transpose times A is also defined. Now before I said you had to be very careful about dimensions when you multiplied. Your inner dimensions had to match. Let's look at inner dimensions now. So if we multiply A and A transpose together, the dimensions of A are M by N, what would the dimensions of the transpose be? N, N by M. You're just swapping your order right there. Is the dimensions proper for multiplication? Yep, so inner dimensions are N. <coughs> And we're allowed to multiply, and what we get, our product, I'll just use P for the product, uh, what we get is going to be an M by M matrix. So we'll get a square matrix out of this product. And now we'll look at the uh, A transpose A. So A transpose times A. So our a dimensions are m by n, a transpose are n by m. So our inner dimensions again match up and our product dimensions will be n by n and we'll just call that other product maybe p2, we'll go p1 and p2. Just some different matrix you'll get. So you can multiply any matrix by its own transpose either order. We'll do an example here. Let uh, matrix A be the matrix 1, 3, 5. So let's find A transpose A, and then also A, A transpose. Remember, the dimensions will be completely different on these two. One of them uh, is going to be a small matrix, the other one a one by one matrix, the other is going to be a three by three matrix when you multiply it out. So find both of these right now. And probably the easiest way to do it, write out A transpose, one, three, five as a column. Column and row matrices are very easy to transpose. You don't have to think very hard, just flip your uh, column into a row or vice versa. Now this product is going to seem kind of strange. You're going across and down. So I can subdivide it up. And here we're going to get a 3 by 3 matrix. So write out your 3 by 3 matrix that you get.
So you should get the matrix 135, 3915, and 51525. And you probably noticed the pattern. Basically, your first row is the first row multiplied, just scaled by the first element right there. Second row is, again, the second matrix multiplied by the second element. And the third row is the same row multiplied by the last entry right there. So now we're going to go the other order. So it's super easy to write out. You just switch the order. And again, we're going across and down. Now it's a little strange because you're going all the way across, all the way down at the same time. So there's only one entry in this matrix right here. Usually we don't talk about matrices that have one element in them. They're kind of boring. But this is a case where we get a matrix with exactly one element inside of it. This operation should feel really similar to another operation that we've done on vectors. What operation is this very similar to? Dot product, which is very similar to magnitude squared. So what we just did is the equivalent to finding the dot product or the magnitude squared of this matrix. So this equals the dot product, which of course is the square magnitude or magnitude squared. That's when they're considered as vectors. So that's the transpose and some neat properties. I don't think I, I underlined transpose, that's good. Now we're gonna look at a special type of transpose matrix and it's called a symmetric matrix. So you have seen the word symmetric before. You probably saw it with graphs. So what did symmetry mean if we were looking at a graph? There's different types of symmetries. Let's go with x-axis symmetry. If you have a graph with x-axis symmetry, what happens? So I could flip over the x-axis and get the same graph. Likewise, if I had y-axis symmetry, I flip over to y-axis, get the same graph. If I had origin symmetry, rotate, get the same graph, rotate around the origin. Now with the matrix, Symmetric relates to transposing, and what that means is when you transpose it, you get the same matrix. So A is a symmetric matrix exactly when <coughs> a transpose is equal to A. That's what it means to be symmetric. Let's look at a couple of consequences of this definition. So if A is M by N, and if that in fact equals A transpose, what are the dimensions of A transpose if A is M by N? It'll be N by M. Now if these are equal, if these dimensions if these two matrices are equal, the dimensions have to match, which means M has to equal N. So it's only a property of square matrices right here. So we see M must equal N. So only square matrices are symmetric.
So now we're gonna get into matrix algebra. So we just lectured on, so I just grouped multiplication into matrix operations, even though it's a separate section in the book. So I'm gonna go in matrix multiplication section and just say uh, C3.1 for multiplication. Uh, there's a couple more uh, algebraic properties I wanna get into here. Do that. Actually, yeah, we'll do a bunch of that in here in this section. So we're going to get into some algebra now. This will be matrix algebra. Let's start with some properties. So I'm going to need some matrices. A, B are going to be matrices. A, B, and C are going to be matrices. using this uh, R to the M by N to indicate matrices with real uh, number entries whose dimension is N rows, M columns. And we'll need a scalar. We'll just stick with the uh, alpha for a scalar. Actually, I need two scalars. So we'll go alpha and beta for scalars. So first property is the commutative property of addition or additive commutativity. So A plus B is equal to B plus A. Now you have to be careful with matrices. This is only true when they're defined. So if the dimensions are off, you can't add A and B together. Uh, but if we look at the dimensions here, A and B had the same dimension, just right there. Uh, when I multiply, which I won't be doing now, but later on we'll go with some multiplication properties, then I need to be very careful about the dimensions, the inner dimensions matching. Uh, but right now we won't do any matrix multiplication here. We'll stick to addition and scalar products. So our next property A plus B and then plus C is equal to A plus B plus C. So this is associativity. Doesn't matter the order that you add matrices. Now I have the identity A plus zero equals A. What do I mean by zero in this case? The zero matrix. The zero matrix that has the same size as A. So here are zero matrix, the fastest way to write it, where the zero matrix lives in R, M by N. So it means the zero matrix with the right dimensions. So it comes from the same, oops, I switched the order. It should be R, N by M. So it has the exact same dimensions as A, B, and C have. And what would we get if we added A plus negative A? The zero matrix. The zero matrix. So it'll be the same zero matrix as before. And now we'll do scalar multiplication across addition of matrices. And we can distribute. And we can distribute a different way if we do a scalar sum and then multiply by the matrix we can distribute the other direction and it's a good time to make sure your beta doesn't look like your B capital B and beta can look really similar the main difference between capital B and beta at least in my font uh, beta has a foot that B doesn't have, so there's no foot part down here on B. And the other thing that's missing in beta, it doesn't come up to a point up there, 
like it's intentionally curved at the top. So make sure your math font is legible. So beta is not capital B. They should not be the same letter. So however you want to make sure it doesn't look the same and doesn't confuse you, go for it. Now, associativity of scalars, alpha, beta times A is the same as multiply beta and A and then multiply alpha afterwards. And last up, scalar, the scalar one multiplied by the matrix A should not change A when you do scalar multiplication. So that one is the number one. So let's talk about linear combinations of matrices. So the matrix A will be 0, 1, negative 1, 0, and B will be 1, 0, 0, 1. And the matrix C will be 1, 1, 1, 1. Is the matrix 1, 4, 2, 1 a linear combination of A, B, and C. So I haven't taught you how to do this directly. But linear combination is a word that you need to know for your last quiz. And it's probably on your cheat sheet if it wasn't before the quiz. So I'm going to write down what does linear combination mean. We've seen that before. So we'll pick some scalars. We'll go alpha 1a plus alpha 2b plus alpha 3c. That's a linear combination of a, b, and c. So it's a scalar, a sum multiplied by scalars. That's what linear combination is. And the question is, can we get this matrix 1, 4, 2, 1? So I'm going to write in the a, b, and c here. So we get alpha 1, 0, 1, negative 1, 0, plus alpha 2, 1, 0, 0, 1, plus alpha 3, 1, 1, 1, 1, equals 1, 4, 2, 1. We can put this into a matrix, but we have a slight problem. We don't really have columns here. So what we're going to do is I'm going to distribute the scalars inside these matrices here. So I'm going to distribute alpha 1 into the first matrix. So we're going to get 0, alpha 1, negative alpha 1, 0. I'm just doing the scalar products here, just multiplying each element by alpha 1. Now I'm going to multiply each element in the next matrix by alpha 2. So we got alpha 2, 0, 0, alpha 2. And last up, alpha 3, alpha 3, alpha 3, alpha 3 equals 1, 4, 2, 1. So any scalar multiplication questions? How do we add matrices together? How do I add the first two matrices? Add each element to the corresponding element of the other matrix. So we got 0 plus alpha 2 is alpha 2. Alpha 1 plus 0 is alpha 1. Minus alpha 1 plus 0 is minus alpha 1. And now 0 plus alpha 2 is alpha 2. Plus alpha 3, alpha 3, alpha 3, alpha 3 equals 1, 4, 2, 1. Now I'm going to add these two matrices together on the left side here. 
This is going to be a more complicated matrix, so I'm going to space it out a little bit more. So our upper left element is alpha 2 plus alpha 3. Upper right is alpha 1 plus alpha 3. And lower left is negative alpha 1 plus alpha 3. And lower right is alpha 2 plus alpha 3. still equal to 1, 4, 2, 1. So any questions on this addition that we just went through here? Just adding up corresponding entries. Now I'm going to just draw the separation lines in here. How many equations are we really looking at? If I want to look at just numeric equations, not in matrices form. Four. There's four equations. Let's write them down. So there's really four equations. And they are alpha 2 plus alpha 3 equals 1. And then alpha 1 plus alpha 3 equals 4. And negative alpha 1 plus alpha 3 equals 2. And then alpha 2 plus alpha 3 equals 1. So we have four equations and three unknowns. How can we solve for these alpha values? Put them in a matrix. Put them in a matrix. So do that right now. Your matrix you put them into should have four rows and three columns. I'll write the columns alpha 1, alpha 2, alpha 3, and then constant. And you should have four rows in your matrix and perform those row operations to get your alpha values. Any row reduction questions? So we got down to a single solution, which is 1, negative 2, 3. For alpha 1, alpha 2, alpha 3. What does that mean about the answer to the original equation, or the original question? Yes. 
So the answer is yes, we found the right three scalars to get this combination to be the third, or the, the fourth matrix on the right side. So yes, and our answer was alpha one equals one, alpha two equals, was it negative two? Yep. Negative two, and then alpha three was three. So that is the answer to the question. So make sure when I ask you a question like this, I don't just want a yes or no. So I want a yes and this is why, meaning yes, here's the three numbers that give the linear combination, or no, and here's the reason why there's no possible way to get those three. What would no, it <clears throat> if the answer to this would have been no, what algebraic result would I have gotten down here? What would free variables mean if I got one free variable? Infinite. So I'd have infinite choices on my uh, three scalars. So not only is there one combination, but there's an infinite combinations. So that means if I had a free variable, yes, I could definitely make a linear combination. In fact, I could make an infinite number of linear combinations that satisfy this equation. So free variables would mean absolutely there's a linear combination. What would have led to no as an answer here? No solution. So if I got down here and there's no alpha 1, alpha 2, alpha 3 to make this true, that means there's no way to make a linear combination. So no solution would have led to no linear combination. Let's look at some more squaring. <coughs> All right, so A is going to be 2, 4, negative 1, negative 2, and find A squared. So A squared is AA. 2, 4, negative 1, negative 2, multiplied by 2, 4, negative 1, negative 2. So that should seem really strange. We just squared a matrix and got the zero matrix. So the zero product property, forget about it. We no longer have that. So we just multiplied two matrices, got the zero matrix, but that does not mean that either of those matrices are zero necessarily. So you don't have zero product property in matrices. So here we had a squared equals zero, but a was definitely not, oh, I should write the zero matrix, but a is not the zero matrix. So your zero product property is out. So remember the zero product property When you have uh, real numbers, so when x and y are real numbers, if x times y equals 0, then x equals 0 or y equals 0. That was our zero product property. So that's no longer true. Not only is it false in matrices, let's go back to uh, modular arithmetic. We worked in z6 before, so let's try out in Z6. Uh, 
Those two nice numbers that give you zero. Oh yeah, three times two is pretty easy. All right, so we'll multiply three and two together. Three times two is six, which is zero. But that doesn't mean that three is zero or two is zero. So we just multiplied three and two, got zero, but three is not zero, two is not zero. So there's no zero product property in Z6. So there's no zero product property in ZP when P is not prime. This gets a little bit more into abstract algebra, but this is true in Z6. It's also true anytime uh, Z4, you can multiply two and two and get zero. Uh, it's true anytime that you have a composite number, meaning it factors. Uh, so even any number in there that factors, like for example, just look at Z20, you can do uh, five times four in Z20 to make 20, which is zero. So anytime you don't have a prime down there, you lose zero product property because that those two numbers you're thinking of that make up that composite number, those numbers multiply to give you zero. So just be a little careful. What that means is if you're doing algebra, So we'll solve for x, and we'll be in z6 here, in the equation 3x equals 0. So clearly x equals 0 is a solution, but we just saw x equals 2 is also a solution. So you can't just uh, divide by 3 anymore. Well, there is no division but dividing by three would be the same as multiplying by the inverse of three, which would be multiplying by two. Well, there's only six elements in the set total, so the maximum number of elements that would solve this would be six, if every number in the system worked. Uh, but three times one, for example, is three. So like one doesn't work. Three times three is nine, which is three, so that uh, three doesn't work. Three times four is twelve, so twelve is an or uh, four is another solution. And we try five. Three times five is fifteen, which does not reduce to zero. It's a uh, what is fifteen? I think fifteen is three. Yeah, fifteen would be three. So we have three solutions: zero, two, and four. But I won't give you problems to do on quizzes or midterms that involve algebra over Z6. I just want to show you some of the dangers uh, that happen both in matrices and modular arithmetic. Um, and the very nerdy term for what we're working over here is we're not working over a field, meaning not every number has an inverse. So there's not a multiplicative inverse for every number. So we'll write down the properties of matrix multiplication now. So I'm going to need some matrices. I'm just going to write our matrices of proper dimensions. And when I write proper dimensions, I mean the ones that make the multiplications work. So 
So A times the product BC, you can reorder that. You can multiply AB first and then C. A times B plus C. Actually, let's, I'm gonna briefly write dimensions in here for this first identity. I probably have to zoom in really far so I can fit these in. So if A has M by N, what dimensions does... So remember, we're looking at the product dimensions now. So the product dimensions have to be N by something that doesn't have to match. So let's go N by P. What does that mean about the dimensions of B? It's going to be n by something. What does that mean about dimensions of C? Something by P. Now what are these somethings? They need to both match or else we can't multiply. So their inner dimensions have to be the same, but they don't have to be n or p so or m. Let's go with q and q. There we go. So this is what I mean, the dimensions have to work out. So if A is M by N, then basically your outer dimensions, your dimension of B has to be N by something, dimension of C has to be something by P, uh, so that this whole product makes sense. But I don't wanna worry too much about all these dimensions here, just as long as they work out, um, so that the multiplication is defined. We get the distributive property where matrix multiplication distributes across matrix addition. And it works in the other <coughs> order. A plus B times C is AC plus BC. You can move scalars around so alpha times AB, you can write that as alpha times A and multiply that matrix by B. You could move the scalar over to the matrix B and multiply it that way. So there's a special matrix and we call it the identity matrix. So I think I talked briefly about the identity matrix. I n is the identity matrix. So it's the n by n identity matrix. And it is the matrix filled with ones in the diagonal and zeros everywhere else ones across the diagonal and zeros off of the diagonal. So this is a good place to stop before we get into some more examples.